Hello, hi, how are you today? Today we're going to talk about the narcissist twin. Is this a curse or is it a blessing in disguise? Hi, I'm Patricia and I help people when they've been activated to really get on track with their journey. Let's get right into it. So the narcissist twin sometimes is the way that this dynamic shows up very, very early on and it can leave people not only scratching their heads, but feeling wounded and hurt. And it doesn't match up with maybe what your expectation of love should be. And yet, is it an all too familiar pattern? For many people, it's very familiar. It pertains to their childhoods. It pertains to the types of things that you're supposed to recognize should not be in your union. So what about the narcissist? A lot of people have taken this to the nth degree where they feel like they're having to get a degree in psychology. Not necessary. If you take a narcissist and boil it down to the very base components, it's someone who is in an extreme mode of self-defense. They're defending oneself. Now, paying attention to oneself is not necessarily such a bad thing but it can bring up a lot of other things such as being cold freezing people out putting up the cold war masking masking the true emotions keeping people off balance withholding withholding of the self withholding affection withholding intimacy not really revealing what is really going on inside now for someone who has a twin who's narcissist, guess what happens? You can't help but feel some of this stuff and feel affected by it. We're here to fix this. We're here to remove. Metaphysical reasons go way into the past. And while it might be out of your wheelhouse, you can be very affected by it. What are some of the things that you've noticed? Okay. And it will be things that we're not even talking about some of the white elephants in the room, like uh, addictions, or we're talking about bad behavior, twins behaving badly. And that's important because you wouldn't want to bring that home, now would you? And yet, why is it near you? Why is it a part of your dualistic experience? I'm this, you're that, I feel it, you're not feeling a thing. I'm going to say one thing to you. The minute they call you crazy, walk. Walk, run to the nearest exit, okay? Because you don't have to stand there and take it. You're not here to take it, take it, take it. You're not here to be someone's convenient little lady, punching bag, or doormat, okay? That's not this life for you. So let's get out of that old way of being even though you might want to, you might not know how to. And I'm going to teach you how to take charge of this situation so that it winds up being win-win for everyone concerned, especially if there's family or a future family. The next thing we're going to talk about is heart disconnection. Now, that is my specialty, which is reconnection. I want to reconnect you to the significant parts that help you live your life the way you're supposed to. Up-leveled, truthful, being able to see right through the BS, being able to call things what they are, not have it hurt you, harm you, wound you, and all these other things that happen. How would your higher self prevent you from having someone who's so heart disconnected that they will physically harm you or become violent with you. And that's a huge piece of this is to put a stop to some of these patterns. Why? For the same reasons. Because what turns a person into that is usually things that they've en endured. However, we're no longer making excuses for the bad behavior. It's not up to you to analyze why you're being treated like this. That's not going to help you. We need to unplug it. We need to get you feeling well, feeling what you need to feel 
because you're the one who is going to drive this train now. You're not receiving the short end of the stick and everything that follows with it. So damage from being heart disconnected, you could sit there and I know this from seeing people, seeing their past lives, seeing their childhoods, seeing what the inner child has endured. Many, many brave lifetimes of just getting by, of just surviving terrible situations, of just, you know, you can't defend yourself. The only way you can defend is curl up in a ball inside or being cold to people because if you show that, you're going to be so vulnerable because people pounce on you. This is the message that has happened particularly for a lot of men. Not easy being a man in the world of men, and men know how other men are. And there's even men who love other men. Who else is going to love the men? It's not just men. It's women. It's women who are dissatisfied in their relationships, and so they take it out on their kids, or they hide in an addiction. They're escaping and avoiding responsibilities. And yeah, sure, that affects a child, big time very, very big, very deeply. And we are here as pioneers to stop these patterns, stop the patterns of relationship because they hurt and they're done. We don't need to do it that way anymore. But we don't know what to do and you don't have the support and you need people who are on the same journey as you so that we get you. We get you. You don't, you cannot afford 10 years of therapy, 10 more years. Can you afford like all these years of like trying or would you like to do it in a much more expedient manner using your new light body? Of course you would. The next thing that people don't take into account when they have a narcissist twin is actual injury. Now these can range from birth traumas um, anything from like, you know, mild shoulder dislocations, um, being uh, not weaned properly, being, you know, it happens at birth, sometimes in utero. I mean, sometimes the abuse happens in utero. If someone has a parent whose other parent is abused, if, you know, dad's beating up mom, it's happening in utero. If it is, uh, let's say, an addiction that's happening or after and there's damaged childhoods this is a real thing it you would say it's sort of a natural conclusion that that person would behave that way they're going to behave badly right we're here to get people on track and we want you to help get on track first and foremost yourself and then that drags your twin behind your truck not the other way around you shouldn't be being dragged around so birth issues birth traumas, child abuse, and I mean anything from the way someone's disciplined, deprived, food deprived, these can be things all along the lines of child abuse. Neglect, okay, uh, childhood abandonment can make people behave a certain way. This is usually carried over within families. It's not just because, oh, someone grew up without a parent that they don't know how to act right. A lot of people do, but the pattern, which is a karmic pattern, has to be gotten rid of. Your brand new light body won't want to carry these old patterns, okay? Now, this is a thing that people don't realize either, is that if you're dealing with someone who is an adult and they have had actual injuries, and some of those injuries are in other lives, that this can affect mental health. We're talking about capital punishments. We're ta talking about things that are so brutal that the mind has blanked it, and yet the behaviors or the acting out is showing up in the next incarnation. Now, these are things that traditional psychology won't tell you. Traditional psychology won't know how to deal with it. Traditional psychology just won't even believe it, nor will the doctors. How do you know if you're experiencing bruises on your body and it's happening because of your other half somewhere? How do you know 
how to really feel what's going on behind the scenes. How do you know how to tune in to the thing that is going to flip this stuff for you? We are here to flip it around for you. And this can be healed. We do that through using the new light body. We're using your divine connections, which is what they're there for. Not the mind, not the frontal lobe, not remembering the last time you argued, but the real things, the things that really count in the whole grand scope of this. So is this a curse? It can feel like a curse. Or is it actually a blessing in disguise where we are actually making better people, better lovers, better romance, better families, new crystal clear children, right? I mean, nothing's good unless it's better, right? This is room for improvement. It's moving the moral compass. Do you want to move the moral compass of a narcissist? Hell yeah. Do you want them to feel some empathy? Yes, and they can. This is not an impossible thing. Sometimes they're very choosy. Oh, they're tricky. They're tricky. They can't fool me. I see right through it. I can feel what's going on. I would tell them the very root cause of where this started to begin with. Of course, that I don't do that because it has to be in a closed protected session where someone is safe and they're capable of feeling, but also the next step. See, here's where we need to do this is take this to the next step, take it to the next level. What do you then do? What is the action? What is the maintenance of this? If you heal something, how do you maintain it? I mean, people who get cancer, they're told, we're going to check on it for the next five years or whatever. There's some kind of window. For you with a brand new body, it's learning about your new body and feeling the minute something's veering off track. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Narcissist twin, is it a blessing in disguise for you so that now you're at a point energetically we are collectively at a point where we can do this you can do this okay so please check out the links below to join the webinar class where we are going to address this and get you some progress and reach out to me with questions or have a one-on-one -on -one session if groups aren't your thing have a one-on-one -on -one session with us thanks so much for watching and watch for my next videos bye